What's up and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about something that is pretty important. It is how to actually get better at music production. I'm gonna be sharing five things that you wouldn't really hear in a tutorial, but will really improve the quality of your music. What I'm gonna be sharing isn't the absolute only way of doing things, but I'm gonna be sharing things from experience. These are things that have improved my music and I just wanna share them with you. My first tip is pay attention to retention. You see what I did there? Pay attention to the song length and make sure you can keep the whole thing interesting. You'll know this is the case when you go to listen back to it and you immediately want to like skip through a certain section of the song or maybe you're showing the song to someone else and they have an instinct to skip through to a new part of the song. When this happens, I want you to be humble. Take this as a sign, keep your song interesting and short and sweet. When I was starting with EDM, this is something I struggled with. I would think, you know, okay, every song needs to have a long intro. For example, here's a song from 2014. I will play just the intro of it and tell me if you have overwhelming feeling of wanting to skip it. Okay, that's all I can handle. That's all I can handle. Something that you may want to consider is just getting to the point, getting to the chorus or the drop within X amount of seconds. Just have good references in time of what would be interesting, which leads right into my second point of two, constantly compare your music. To be completely transparent, I didn't do this when I was starting out because I didn't feel like my music was good enough. Subconsciously, I never wanted to put my music side by side with like a better song because I was afraid it wasn't gonna match up. The sooner you expose this weakness, the sooner you can get over it. When you're making a song, throw in one, two, three reference tracks and use them for lots of different references. One example is for the mix. How loud does someone have their kick and bass compared to the rest of the song? Another example is song structure. And the third is instrumentation. Paying attention to the changes in instrumentation and what instruments are being used. And I would recommend use more than one reference track because if you just take all of these elements from the same track, that gets into weird legal territory of stealing someone else's song. So don't do that. All right, number three is limit complexity. Simplicity works for a reason. When I was preparing for this, I was thinking of a Chainsmokers old video clip when they invited a fan out and the fan was a music producer and the fan showed his music and they actually gave him some tips on it. Focus on getting the elements you do have as good as possible rather than adding more and more elements to compensate. The example he was talking about was a bad piano sound. The guy just kept adding more and more layers of piano onto something rather than focusing on finding the one good piano sound and making the song around that. All right, here we go. Let's get into hot take time. Number four, focus on improvement, not promotion. I would say if you wanna get better at music production, put your songs out, maybe on SoundCloud and don't spend serious time promoting them. Spend more time making songs. I really wish I took all the hours that I spent trying to make people like my music and just put them into making more and more songs. The process of making songs is a skill and the more you do it, the better you get at it. But the more time you spend trying to get other people to listen and like your music without really knowing if it's good or not, it's just time spent away from music production that you could be using to make better music. Number five, last one on the list is how to find your style. I know this is a question that a lot of people have and I don't think I have the only answer, but I think you should try making the song that you wish existed. Let your preferences be your guide. If you think, oh, it would be cool to do X, then do it. The other day I was listening to this podcast called Cortex and this guy named CGP Gray said something on there that really resonated with me. You should make a product that you yourself would use that is in your field that you would know everything about. Make a product that you yourself want. That way you don't have to put yourself in someone else's shoes to understand why someone would enjoy it, understand what features someone would want from it, understand how to make it the best it can be. It seems like a really simple thing, like make the thing that you like, but it's not that easy. There may be outside forces that are convincing you to do something other than that. A couple examples of this is you're listening to new release songs. So you're going down New Music Friday and you're thinking, oh wow, I wanna, I wanna make a song like that because internally you're thinking, wow, that song's successful. I wanna be successful. I need to make that song. Another one is record labels. You might think that you need to be signed to a record label. So you say, hey, I wanna make a song that's signed by this record label. And then you say to yourself, I need to copy whatever songs that they are releasing. I say this because I have done this. I was just trying to be a chameleon 
and make whatever anyone else wanted. All right, those are the five tips I would give on how to actually get better at music production. Let me know if you want another one like this. I could definitely do another one. <laughs> All right, classic move. I'm gonna go make a beat now for the second half of this video. I wanna do something that's just like a bunch of hits. It goes bow, 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 like a, you know, you know what I mean? Like a thing with a synth. I think I'm gonna need a bass line in there before I can actually develop this. Maybe if I add in some drums, it'll be easier. Ooh, I've got an idea. It's gonna be a chugga deka chugga deka. I'm actually going back to that original idea I had. It was just like a, like a longer note. Mm-mm-mm. Hot diggity dog. Okay, now that I have that idea out, I'm gonna make something that would come before it. So let's try making like a like a square arpeggio thing. Da. I'm feeling this would sound good with some side chain on it. Some really like over the top side chain. I feel like it needs something to keep time in the intro. So I want to do like a rim or something. All right, I feel like I've got a good idea for how this is going to go. I'm going to spend some time working on some details and then I'll be back in a second. All right, did some mining off camera. I'll go over the, some of the changes real quick. The melody arp thing. I added an auto pan, which is basically tossing it between the left and right channel. Erosion is just adding a little white noise. And then I did a little automation here with this glitch plugin. Just to add a little variation. Add a little bit of I added a little uh, vocal shot thing and I'm just running that through Waves Tune. I wanted to add some more drums in the intro and I found this really good loop, but the only thing is the loop is a halftime feel and I wanted it like a more of four on the floor. I threw it into a slicer and what that does is it gives you a bunch of notes that you can mess around with. I edited it so that the snare would come on two and four instead of on three. And then I just added some little arrangement stuff. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna finish this beat and you'll hear it in a second. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.